It's Easter time, it's the best time of the year. Time to take an egg and plant it in the ground. Let's see what happens now. Ooh. What are you doing, John? Shh, just wait. For what, an egg tree to grow? <laughs> Eggs don't grow on trees, Brandon. Mm. You know what, maybe it needs a little water. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Here we go. What are we? Ah! Ah! How did you? How did that? <laughs> Happy Easter. We did. You just water it. Hello, everyone. 
everyone. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to a very special day here on the So and So Show. Yes, that's right. We're celebrating Easter. Woo! Yes, and we decided to start the celebrations off strong today with a little Easter themed fun. Let's do it. All right. Our first game shall be the traditional, iconic Easter egg hunt. Yeah, but this is no ordinary egg hunt. Uh -huh. Inside each egg are instructions that we must follow before being allowed to move on to search for more eggs. Yes. The person to collect the most eggs before the music ends wins. So it's not traditional? N not so much. Okay. All right, let's go. Woo! I found one. Oh, you did? Already? Yeah, here we go. Here are you. Ooh. Uh, quack like a duck. Quack, quack, quack. Okay, uh, quack. do five jumping jacks quack. while saying things that go along with Easter. Okay, uh, 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 bunnies, candy, Jesus, springtime, hi um. Uh, let's see, oh, I found one right here. Uh, okay, one, two, three, whoa. Okay, okay, that works. Um, Chocolate bunnies! Chocolate bunnies! Chocolate bunnies! Right, let's see. Balance an egg on your nose. That's easy. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. Hooray! Hey! Okay. Arise, my love. Arise, my love. Uh, all right, all right, all right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> A tie. Hmm. Well, that won't last long. Next game. You want to go first? You, you go want first. me go first? Okay, stay still. Oh, way off. Yeah, here we go. Oh. You got it. You, uh, you hit no. the you hit the ear though. I hit the ear. All right. Okay, we must follow the buddy trail and race to the finish, all while being pummeled by eggs. You're the bunny. Be the bunny. I am the bunny. No! Oh, no! I am a faster bunny than Brandon! I am a faster bunny than Brandon! Hey, you ready, Brandon? Oh, I was born ready. Really? That seems a bit strange. No, it's just a saying. Yes, I was born. Yes, I'm ready. Oh, good! Cause it's war, baby! Peep war! All right. Play! Yeah. Oh. Ah. oh. Oh. Nope. Yes, look at that! Three and one. <sighs> Who won? I don't know. Well, how do we decide? I, I don't know. You want to have a rematch? No, I'm good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey guys! Hey Kellen! Happy Easter, Kellen! Happy Easter, everyone. Are you guys ready to hear the most epic Bible story ever? Absolutely. Yeah, sounds amazing. Take it away. Well, like I've talked about before, Jesus is God's son who came to earth over 2,000 years ago. He traveled all over Israel with his followers teaching people about God's kingdom and healing people of diseases. He taught people how to be generous, he taught them how to pray, and he taught the most important commandment, which is to love God and to love one another. But he wasn't just sent to earth to do those things. He had a very special mission to save the world and to make it possible for people to have a relationship with God. A revelation that would last forever. Um, hi. 
Hi yourself. I was just about to tell everyone the epic story of Jesus' ultimate mission on earth. And I was just about to go behind the Bible. Jesus and his followers traveled all over Israel. His fame was growing and people began wanting to make him their king. But the religious leaders didn't like this. They felt threatened by Jesus and wanted to get rid of him. So when Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover festival, the religious leaders hatched their plan. We were in the garden of Gethsemane and Jesus had been praying. Me and some other disciples, James and John, we were just exhausted, <laughs> could barely keep our eyes open. We might have fell asleep a couple of times, but Jesus kept insisting on praying. I honestly didn't understand why we could not just go to bed. We'd done the Passover meal. Why were we staying up so late to pray? But then we heard them. This crowd of people coming with torches and weapons and there were all these soldiers and Judas. Someone we thought was our friend was leading them. Jesus asked them, who? do you want? And somebody said, Jesus of Nazareth. So Jesus said, I am he. And then they all just fell to the ground. He could have escaped, but he didn't. That's important to remember. Jesus was so powerful and in control the whole time, but he chose, he chose to let the soldiers arrest him. He knew that this was all a part of God's plan and a part of his mission. And it was a mission he would face alone. When they arrested Jesus, all of my friends, they all just ran away. Me and one other disciple followed him at a distance. I was determined that I would never abandon him like the others. They followed Jesus to the home of the high priest. While Jesus was being questioned, Peter waited in a courtyard outside. When asked if he was a follower of Jesus, Peter denied knowing him. I denied knowing Jesus, my friend, my Lord. Three times I denied him. Jesus was questioned by the high priest, and he was found guilty even though he'd done nothing wrong. Then Jesus was handed over to the Roman governor for punishment, a man named Pontius Pilate. I wasn't sure what to think of this Jesus of Nazareth. I couldn't find him guilty of any crimes. I told the people I believed he was innocent, but the crowd kept shouting for me to crucify him to put Jesus to death. And I, I didn't want to upset the people, so I ordered him to be crucified. Two other men, criminals, were crucified next to Jesus, one on each side. And after a few long hours, Jesus died. Jesus gave up his life. He died on the cross as a payment for the sins of the world. He made a way for us to have a relationship with God again. His mission to save the world involved laying down his life so that we could truly live. But that wasn't the end of the story. No, it wasn't. Carry on. Two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloth. They put him in a tomb outside a garden and sealed it shut with a large stone. Two days later, one of Jesus' followers, Mary Magdalene, went to the tomb. I got there first thing in the morning, and the stone had been moved away from the entrance. So I told Peter and John, and they raced to the tomb as fast as they could. So I walked into the tomb, and I was shocked. It was empty, except for the cloth Jesus' body was wrapped in. We didn't know what to think. Who would take a body? Peter and John went back to where they were staying, and I went to the tomb. When I went inside, I saw two angels dressed in white sitting where Jesus' body had been. 
They spoke to me. They asked me, why are you crying? And then I turned around and I saw who I thought was the gardener. He asked me who I was looking for and I said, Sir, did you carry him away? Where did you put him? And then he said, Mary. <gasps> then I knew. He wasn't the gardener. He was Jesus. He was alive. He was dead, but now he's alive. <sighs> Mary went to the disciples and told them what she had seen. She said, I have seen the Lord. Man, can you imagine what they must have thought? Were they happy? Were they confused? Were they unsure? No, they were scared. Oh. The disciples were all together hidden behind locked doors, afraid that if Jesus could be killed, they might be next. It was hard to believe what Mary told them unless they saw it with their own eyes. They would soon get that chance. We were huddled together when all of a sudden, Jesus just shows up right there in the room with us. He said, may peace be with you. And I'm like, yes, yes, peace is what we need. He showed us the wounds where he'd been hurt on the cross. It was really him, alive from the dead. Jesus, the Son of God and Savior of the world, gave his life to save us. And on the third day, Jesus rose again. Not even death could stop him. This has been Behind the Bible. When Jesus came back to life, he not only defeated death for himself, he defeated the power of death for everyone. And that's why we celebrate Easter. That was amazing. Hey, you were right, Kellen, that was epic. Seriously, the best Bible story. You know, Jesus was so humble. He could have chosen himself over us and saved himself, but he didn't. Nope. And even though he was God's son, he still chose to lay down his life and serve and love others. Yep. On Easter, we celebrate his love, his sacrifice, and his resurrection. He is alive, and we can have a relationship with him. That is definitely the best reason to celebrate. Oh, and speaking of celebrations, I've got to get going. I have my own celebration plans to get to. Have fun. Thanks, Kellen. Happy Easter, buddy. You too. I'll see you next time. I wonder what his plans are. I don't know. Hmm. I wonder what everyone's plans are today. Reveal the question. How do you celebrate Easter? Yeah, uh, perhaps you play some springtime games with bunnies and eggs like we did earlier. Or maybe you like to read the story of Easter oh, yeah. or spend time listening to music. Or eating a meal with people you love, loving others the way Jesus taught us yeah, to. There's so many ways to celebrate the good news that Jesus is alive. Hey, no matter how you celebrate, we hope you have a very happy Easter. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was The So-and-So Show. Happy Easter! Woo! So how are you feeling today? You feeling pretty good? Are you excited it's Easter? Tweet, tweet. What's your name? Yeah. I'm gonna guess Sal. I think it's Squeaky. Squeaky, I think it's squeak, okay. Squeak. Oh, Tori. Oh, Tori. I'm gonna catch you, Tori. <laughs>